Now we're going to go through some of the screens that you'll see in a FANUC control. Those of you that have used FANUC in the past will be familiar with some of these. Some of our legacy screens haven't really changed that much. And that's a deliberate reason. We want to keep familiarity with some of the screens so people know how to navigate their way around. What you will see in the market now is you'll see some machines with the new IHMI. We don't do that on this particular unit, but there is some newer screens that are available for FANUC. But all of those newer systems also go back to the, the trusted legacy screens that everyone's familiar with. So first of all, we'll start with the position screen. Here is where we would see our active part programs, we'd see our speeds and feeds, cycle times, our positions for both absolute, relative and machine. We'd also see active G codes and M codes that are in the program while it's running. The next one, if we go to the program screen, in here we will see our active program. We'd also see our directory folder where the programs are. We can also then look at the, a screen that will show us the next block in a part program if we're executing and also the check screen will show you the program as we're going through as well. Another screen that we've already showed a little bit here is our offset and setting screen where we have our work offsets, tool offsets and basic settings that we use. There are some additional soft keys in there that we won't go into where we've got operator, panel, we've got our macros if we want to do some parametric programming. We also have language selection and things like that. The next screen is the, the message screen. This is the one that we we don't really want to go in too often. This is where alarms occur. So uh, an alarm is a FANUC driven alarm. It's from the CNC. So it could be a servo alarm or something like that, a syntax error with the part program. The CNC has detected something wrong with its system. The other soft key is message. Now message is uh, operator or machine tool builder driven. So these are usually things like uh, loop pump uh, issues or coolant tank is low. They're usually an input that comes from the machine to tell you or to warn you about something that might be about to go wrong. And then the history will list alarms that have occurred recently. The next one we've already talked about is the graphical screen for our manual guide eye, where we can both simulate and create part programs. And then the custom buttons, these are blank on this particular unit. Some machine tool builders may introduce their own custom screens on the, on the control, and they would assign those screens to these buttons. The last one is our system button. And this is where we find our parameters. We also find our diagnostic tools where we can check uh, data bits. If there's been an alarm, we can reference a diagnostic to see what that might, might do to it. We also have an embedded servo guide, but since we don't have motors, it's not something we can use on this simulator. Our system button tells us, or tells FANUC specifically, what software and hardware is in the system. As we go across, on the, the soft keys here, we now get to our PMC screens. Uh, those of you that are familiar with PLC programming logic, this looks very, very similar. A series of inputs and coils for outputs, but also there's a lot of interaction between the PMC and the CNC. So instead of just your X and Y addresses, we have F and G addresses as well. Uh, we can also check on the maintenance screen, we can start to look at some of the specific inputs. So 8-bit 4 is usually always the emergency stop. We can see the bit triggering here. This PLC or PMC as we call it, programmable machine control, is live and active inside the control. The config will tell you the addition of the ladder that's in there and there's also some areas where we can go in if we need to actually change the ladder. You can edit the ladder on the CD that comes with the unit. There is a sample ladder there's a sample lathe program and a sample mill program. So you can make changes to those if you want to go into that side of things. Next, we go further across again. Our all IO is just another screen where we can load data in and out of the control, as well as operation history. We'll actually follow every key sequence I've pressed, timestamping alarms and things like that. There we come back. I go across one more. You can change colors and things on the control as well. FSSB is a setting screen that we won't use. FSSB is the FANUC servo serial bus. It's our fiber optic link that connects with our drives and motors. So we won't be going into that. And then we have the ethernet settings. So the embedded port is the one that you'll find around the back. 
and the PCM CIA is if you have a LAN adapter to plug into this card slot. All of the simulators are essentially IoT ready, they can go on a network. All we need to do is assign a static IP address usually to the control uh, and a subnet mask. And then if we want to pull data out of the control, we will need to give it a port number as well. So those settings are all found here. ID info is not to worry about. Every fan at control has a unique four sets of numbers that's its ID. And then PMC axes, again, we don't have any axes on here. So that's really a quick overview of that set of screens that we have there. If you do have any further questions or queries, there is an operator manual that comes with the control on the CD-ROM. If you print it out, you'll get this basic manual. There is also a PDF, well, this is a PDF. You'll also have a PowerPoint on there that shows you some uh, keystrokes or sequences to, to actually use the control. And beyond that, there are the regular FANUC manuals that probably everyone is familiar with, um, which will give very specific information about a certain parameter or an alarm or a, a methodology to actually programming or using a particular G-code.